Okay, yesterday we have talked about the uh, course layout and uh, we have illustrated some important terms. Now we are going to continue with the uh, important mobile terms to be able to understand uh, the next coming uh, lectures. So uh, we said that uh, the mobile communication system or cellular communication system consists of three basic elements. First one will be the mobile station or the mobile user. Second thing will be the base station. And the third part of the cellular communication system will be the mobile switching center, which is the coordinator of the system. Again, the MSC provides a link to the, to the PSTN, I mean to the public telephone switching network or landline uh, telephones. Okay. Now, base station, uh, here we have um, some definitions we have to follow. So first of all, I'm, I'm going to define what do you mean by the base station, and then mobile switching center, MSC, uh, subscriber, and then we are going to talk about the other important uh, things. Of course, you have to understand and memorize these terms, okay? You have to understand, first of all, what are they, then you can, you will be able to memorize these uh, terms. First of all, base station. What do you mean by the base station? Base station, a fixed station in a mobile radio system. So first of all, when we talk about mobile station, mobile station will be what? Will be movable, okay? Uh, while the base station is a fixed station. No. The other question is what? Base station contains what or consists of what? Base stations are located at the center. Oh. I have to mute the mute or. Okay. Now, uh, the base stations uh, are consist of the following parts. Radio channels, transmitter and receiver antennas mounted on a tower. So first of all, the kind of base station is a fixed. Used for what? Used for radio communication with mobile stations, okay? Base stations locations may be what? Maybe at the center of the cell or at the edge of the coverage uh, region. Well, so this is the base station. I mean, first of all, you have to define what do you mean by the base station? It will be a fixed station. Um, consists of what? Its location and its function. 
So its functions will be used to provide radio communication with what? With mobile station. In other words, base station will represent a bridge between the mobile station and the mobile switching center. Really, this is the definition of the what? Of the base station. Now let's go to the uh, another important part of the mobile communication system, which is the mobile switching center. Okay, mobile switching center. Mobile switching center, which coordinates the routing of calls in the large service area in the cellular system. MSC connects the cellular base station and the mobiles to whom? To the PSTN. Well, so the link between the mobile units or subscribers and the landline telephones will be provided by whom? By the MSC or the mobile switching center. And MSC is also called mobile telephone switching office. Now, by now we have talked about base station and mobile switching center. Now let's go to the subscriber or the user. Subscriber user who pays subscription charge for using mobile communication system. Of course, all of us are what are subscribers. Why? We are paying subscription fees for what? For using the uh, different uh, communication services. Another important part in the uh, cellular communication network, we said that base station, mobile switching telephone, and mobile station. Okay. Now, what will be the mobile station? A station in cellular radio service intended for use while in what? While in motion at any specified location. When we talked about base station, we said it's a fixed station. While here, no. We have uh, a unit while in what? While in motion at any specified location. Mobile stations, again, maybe what? Maybe handheld personal units, portables, or it may be installed in vehicles, maybe mobiles. And yesterday we have talked about the term mobile and the term uh, portable, and we have distinguished between these two important terms. Well, now we have uh, illustrated the basic uh, uh, parts of the cellular communication system. Um, now we are going to talk about the channels between uh, uh, every two elements in the cellular communication uh, system. Of course, to understand uh, the operation, we said that we have two kinds of uh, channels traffic channels and uh, control channels. Now let me uh, talk about uh, the, I'll show you something on the whiteboard. No, not now, no. Yeah. Well, so good. Okay, we said that uh, the general layout of the cellular communication network will be the following. Uh, here we have the MSC, and the MSC is connected to whom? To the PSTN, which is the landline telephones. And uh, this MSC is connected to whom? To all base stations. Okay, here we have a base station. Another base station. Okay, these are the base stations. Well, um, type of channels, channels can be divided broadly into two types. Okay, traffic channels, traffic channels and control channels. These are the basic types of what? Of channels. Basically, we have two kinds. Uh, first one will be the traffic. The second one will be the control channel. Of 
course, again, uh, the communication, for example, between mobile and base station, we have two uh, lines, okay? Uh, first one will be uplink and we have the downlink and forward and reverse channel. Of course, the communication channel from the base station to the mobile is called forward control channel, okay? And the communication between the base station and our mobile station uh, to the uh, base station will be what will be reverse control channel. So uh, this one will be reverse control channel, while this one will be a forward forward control channel. Okay, this one will be forward control channel. And this one will be reverse control channel. Now, uh, by now we are going to explain what do you mean by each kind and how are they working. Now, after this diagram, now it's very clear how, how, how many number of kind, kinds of channels we have and how we are going to deal with such a system. From current, yes. Okay, now, look at control channel. Radio channels used for transmission of call setup. Radio channels used for transmission of call setup, call request, call initiation, and other beacon or control purposes. Well, on the other hand, we have, for example, and other kinds of channels, which are, for example, the traffic uh, 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 traffic channels. Well, which is what which is used for, uh, for example, speech transmission or uh, some uh, or uh, say, uh, text or any personal data. Now, forward control channel, radio channel used for transmission of information from base station to whom to the mobile. Okay, forward control channel is a channel dedicated, okay, to transfer the information from base station to whom? To the mobile. On the other hand, we have another kind of channels, which is called what? Reverse channel. Radio channel used for transmission of information from what? From mobile to whom? To the base station. Now, by now we have explained again what they mean by the two kinds of uh, channels. I mean, traffic and control channel. And then we have illustrated what do you mean by the forward and reverse uh, channels. Now, as I think you have studied the as I think you have studied the the full duplex, half duplex simplex systems a uh, simplex system is a one-way communication half duplex is a two-way and full duplex uh, two-way at the same time okay so as i think you have studied the the uh, these uh, terms i mean the full duplex simplex and full duplex channels of course the communication channels used in the cellular communication system will be of kind full duplex Another important uh, definition we have is called uh, is called the handoff. Handoff the process of transferring a mobile station from one channel or base station to another. Of course, this process must be done in a way must be what imperceptible to whom to the user. Okay, so this is this is again what handoff. Of course, at which time. Uh, the handoff will occur when mobile, for example, mobile or subscriber, I mean mobile station, say, travels, travels from one cell to another or he, it may travel from one sector to another. So these cases will lead to what? Will lead to a, a handoff uh, process. Of course, in the next coming lectures, inshallah, we are going to talk about uh, the handoff process in detail. Well, now, 
another important uh, uh, term we have rumor okay what do you mean by the rumor rumor a mobile station which operates in a service area or market other than that from which service has been subscribed for example when you travel to the any neighbor country or anywhere out outside of our country uh, you will be considered as what well as a rumor so you are going to use the same sim card uh, uh, with uh, with other uh, networks okay so in this case you will be a rumor well uh, another uh, term which is, which is page a page is a brief message which is broadcast over the entire service area usually in a simultaneous in simultaneous cast fashion by many base stations at the same time uh, pagers or paging system is uh, used in say for example uh, factories and in hospitals well um, now we have the final uh, term we have the transceiver transceiver a, a device capable of simultaneously transmitting and receiving radio signals uh, so it's a uh, a, a, a special kind of antenna for example contains transmitting and receiving antennas and cable of transmitting and receiving at the same time so these are the basic important terms you need in your study for uh, this course inshallah okay transmission modes as i have told you before transmission modes may be uh, may be used uh, You have studied the, these terms, I mean simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. And we said that the mobile communication system will be of type full duplex. Now, here we have some examples about uh, the mobile communication systems. Um, of course, what do you mean by uh, these systems? Uh, basically, we have uh, the following systems, um, uh, paging system. Um, we have uh, the cordless telephone and finally we have the cellular communication uh, system um, so directly we are going to talk about uh, some of these uh, systems briefly of course we are going to talk about these systems not in detail uh, and we may make use of some important uh, points uh, again, um, we have, for example, uh, radar systems, uh, satellite systems, really all of these are what are examples for whom? For the wireless communication uh, systems. But by now, we are going to talk about uh, the paging. What's the paging? Paging systems are communication systems that send brief messages okay to a subscriber depending on the type of the service the message may be either a numeric message or it may be alphanumeric message or it may be what it may be a voice message but you have to keep in your mind that the paging system is a one-way communication yeah and for example if someone asks you give me an example about simplex communication system you may uh, say that the uh, paging system is an example for what for simplex um, really paging system or pagers can be used as i have told you before in in uh, in hospitals for example uh, so we may give orders or instructions uh, to the employers for example uh, you may receive a message the message instructing the employer for example, or the doctor or um, nurses, for example, um, for example, go to room number one, go to num room number two and so on, or go to the building, another building and so on. Well, this is what widely used where in the hospitals, uh, plus it can be used in the uh, factories again. Well, so uh, used for what? For instructing or informing uh, 
uh, the user by important uh, messages. Well, paging system very widely in their complexity, vary widely in their com complexity and coverage area. Uh, while simple paging system may cover a limited range of two kilometer to five kilometer, we said that it may be restricted for what? For um, hospital or factories or um, say, for example, maybe using the universities and so on, or even be confined to within individual building. Well, so either we are going to coverage uh, two to five kilometer or it may be used inside the build buildings. At that time, we may say it's considered as indoor communication. Wide area paging can provide worldwide coverage. Okay. Now, we have uh, talked about uh, uh, the principles of the paging system. Of course, somebody may ask why we are going to use the, the, the paging system. Really, every system has its own applications, and plus the applications, we have another important factor in engineering, which is the what, which is the cost. Really, we are looking forward to uh, you, uh, use systems with with um, low cost. Well, so uh, look at uh, this uh, paragraph; is very important. Paging systems are designed to provide reliable communication to subscribers wherever they are whether inside a building, driving on a highway, or flying in an airplane. This is cities, large transmitter powers on the order of what? Of kilowatts and low data rate. Well, of course, whenever we talk about high power, okay, uh, low data rate means what? Small bandwidth. Now, why we are going to use, for example, uh, uh, a small bandwidth, not a very large bandwidth, okay? Do you know why? Can anyone tell me why in the paging system we are utilizing a small bandwidth for communication? Hmm? Why we are using such a system? Huh? Can you hear me or not? Do you hear me or not? We can't talk, we can't. Oh, this all. Okay. Uh, I have muted you for what? For, yes. Now you can answer. Manager. I have muted all of you. Why? I have heard noise. Okay, background noise. <laughs> to continue with the lecture. Otherwise, we have to what? We have to stop the lecture. Hey. Okay, now my question is why we are going to use a small bandwidth? A small bandwidth for what? For the paging system. Can anyone tell me? Mm -hmm. It's very good. Yes, it's very good. Okay. Uh, why? Really, we are talking about what? About text messages or in the worst case, we have voice message. Okay. So... Uh, really, we don't need large amount of bandwidth, okay? So a small bandwidth may be used, and then we may what? We may increase the amount of power, power transmission, 
uh, for um, coveraging large number uh, or, or large area, really. Okay, now here you have figure 1.3 shows the uh, diagram for the paging system. Uh, we may again look at, please, paging control center, again, is connected to whom? To the PSTN. Uh, this is what we mean by integrated system. Whenever we are going to install a new system, the new system must integrate with the previous systems, okay? I mean, we don't have the ability or it's not acceptable to install a system which works individually, okay? Whenever you are going to install a new system, this new system must be what was, must be integrated with the uh, previous systems. So uh, this is the paging control system, and we may have landline, landline links uh, to the cities and then base stations of the paging system, or we may use the satellite link to provide uh, the coverage area in the uh, deserted areas, okay? Well, uh, another uh, example for the uh, communication services, it is the cordless telephone system. A cordless telephone system are full duplex communication systems that use radio to connect portable handsets. Please look, when we talk about cordless telephone, we said what? Portable handsets. I mean, it is used for what? For uh, subscribers at walking speed. Well, to a dedicated base station, which is then connected to a dedicated telephone line with a specific telephone number on the public switch telephone uh, network, PSTN. So the cordless telephone will be installed on a, a landline line um, in the first generation cordless telephone system manufactured in 1980s. The portable unit communicate only to the dedicated base unit and only over distance of few tens of meters. Early telephone operates solely as an extension to the telephones to a transceiver connected to a subscriber line on the PSTN and are primarily for in-home use. Okay. What about the second generation? In the second generation cordless telephone system have recently been introduced, which allow subscribers to use their handset at many outdoor location within what? Within urban centers or I mean city centers. Now, modern telephones are sometimes combined with a paging receiver to that a subscriber may be first page and then respond to the page using the cordless telephone. Now, what about the range of the second um, generation? A typical second generation base station provide coverage range up to few hundred meters. Uh, figure 1.4 uh, is used for the cordless telephone. This is the public switching telephone network. And we have to have uh, a landline line at our home. Then uh, at, uh, using this landline, uh, and we are going to uh, install a base uh, unit, okay? Uh, again, with an antenna uh, mounted on the top of the roof, okay? Then uh, this antenna will provide uh, communication to the handset outdoor, outdoor handsets, okay? This is about the cordless telephone and the uh, paging system. Now let's go to another uh, uh, service of the mobile communication system, which is the what? Which is the cellular communication system. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, another service which is provided by the wireless communication system will be the, the cellular telephone system. Now, why we are going to install or develop a cellular communication system? Of course, any project, any system, anything we are going to do, we have some objectives we are going to obey. So what are the objectives for the, what? For the cellular communication system? Now, a cellular telephone system provides a wireless connection to whom? 
to the PSTN for any user location within the radio range of the system. This is the first objective. What will be the second objective? The second objective, cellular communication system will accommodate a large number of users over large geographic area. Within what? Within a very limited frequency spectrum. Any communication system needs what? Needs resources. Or any project, you talk about any project, we have some some resources. Now, the most important resource in the cellular communication system or in any communication system really is the bandwidth. Bandwidth is very limited. Okay. So we have to find out techniques, ways, algorithms, and so on for what? For efficiently utilize the available bandwidth. So in the cellular communication system, really we have a very interesting technique, which is called the frequency reuse. This technique will enhance and increase the capacity of the system and efficiently utilize the available bandwidth or spectrum. So the cellular system, second objective of the cellular communication system to accommodate what large number of users or supporting high capacity, high system capacity. Okay. Another important thing, cellular radio system provide high quality service that's often comparable to that of landline telephone system. Well, now can anyone tell me what do you mean by high quality service here? <laughs> Hmm. Can anyone give me an example about this high quality service? What do you mean by high quality service? Hmm. It means used for listening for music or what? What does it mean? Hmm? What does it mean? Well, uh, really, when we talk about high quality service, it means we have to, uh, we are going to reduce the blocking probability uh, when we are going to, when we are going to attempt to establish a call. High capacity is achieved by limiting the coverage area of each base station transmitter to a small geographic area called a cell so that the same radio channels may be reused by another base station located some distance away. Of course, this distance will be defined in the next coming lectures as co-channel distance. So by now we have what we have explained the objectives of establishing or installing a cellular communication system. Cellular telephone, a sophisticated switching technique called a handoff, enables a call to proceed uninterrupted when the user moves from one cell to another. Basic cellular communication system consists of the following three elements, mobile station, base stations, and mobile switching center. Now, Mobile station contains a transceiver, an antenna, and control circuitly, and may be mounted in a vehicle or used as portable handheld unit. Base stations consist of several transmitters and receivers, which simultaneously hand, handle full duplex communications and generally have towers which support several transmitting and receiving antennas. The base station serves as a bridge between all mobile users in the cell and connects the simultaneous mobile calls via telephone lines or microwave links to the MSC. Really, this is an, an example about uh, the cellular communication network. As you can see, now the region is divided into uh, cells um, and every cell has its own base station. Okay, 
Now, the base stations are connected to the MSC either by, uh, say, microwave link or, say, fiber optic cables. Then the MSC itself is connected to whom? To the public switching telephone uh, network. This is the, uh, the diagram of the, the basic cellular communication system. Okay, now. now we have some numerical values, uh, typical values about the MSC. Of course, what do you mean by the MSC or the mobile switching telephone office? Since it's responsible for what? Connecting all mobiles to the PST and the cellular system, each mobile communicates via radio with one of the base stations and may be handed off to any number of base stations throughout the duration of a call. MSC coordinates the activities of all of the base stations and connects the entire cellular system to the home, to the PSTN. Now, typical MSC handles 100,000 cellular subscribers and 5,000 simultaneous conversation at a time and accommodate all billing and system maintenance function. Now, how we are going to uh, define the interface between, for example, a mobile station and base station, base station and the MSC. Of course, these are defined using the common air interface. Communication between the base station and the mobiles in the defined is defined by a standard common air interface, CAI, that specifies four different channels. Uh, the channels used for the voice transmission from the base station to the mobiles are called forward voice channel, okay? Channels used for voice transmission from mobile to the base station are called reverse voice channel, and we have forward control channel and reverse control channels. So these are the basic four kinds of the what? of the common air interface. Well, they are forward voice channel, reverse voice channel, forward control channel, and reverse control channel. Now, control channel, now we are going to talk about the function of each kind. Control channels are often called setup channels because they are only involved in setting up and initiation a call and moving, to, moving it to an unused voice channel. Control channels transmit and receive data messages that carry call initiation and service requests and are monitored by mobile when they don't have a call in progress. Really, forward channel or control channel are what are the channels transmitted by the base station. So every mobile unit must be engaged with a with a forward control channel. Forward control channel also serves as a beacon which can con continually broadcast all of the traffic requests for all mobiles in the system. Now we have two scenarios, okay? Scenario number one will talk about establishing a call from public switching telephone network to a mobile unit, while the second scenario will be establishing a call from a mobile unit to whom to a landline telephone or a PSTN user. Of course, how we are going to do so, uh, first of all, let us talk about the general uh, uh, of the cellular communication system. And then we are going to talk about uh, uh, the connection between mobile and landline telephone and a landline to mobile unit. What will happen when we are going to switch on our mobile phones? Whenever you are going to switch the mobile phone or turn on, but not yet engaged in a call, it first scans the group of forward control channels, okay? to determine the one with the strongest signal. So 
we may assume that that the mo our mobile unit may lie, say for example, among three base stations. Among three base station. So, is the mobile connect to the base station one, two, or three? Really, the mobile unit. When you are going to switch on the mobile unit, it will scans the forward control channel or the available base stations, nearby base stations, it will be scanned by the mobile. Then the mobile will select the what the most strongest signal, and it will be engaged to that base station. The control channels are defined and standardized over entire geographic area covered and typically make up about 5% of the total number of channels available in the system. The other 95% are dedicated to the voice and data traffic for the end users. So every time we are going to uh, divide the available bandwidth into channels, so then 5% of the channels will be dedicated for the what for the control channels and the rest of the channels will be dedicated for what for traffic or voice channels. Now, how a, a cellular telephone call is made. Now I'm going to give you a rest about uh, uh, 10 minutes and we are going to uh, continue with our lectures at four o'clock, inshallah. 